A few months ago, Sky News Service reported a story about a man by the name of Philip Hodger. Now, Philip's from the UK, and he's managed to do something that you and I could never dream of doing. Because you see, Mr. Hodger had the thought, if a little deodorant makes you smell good, then a lot of deodorant will make you smell great. <laughs> so he took the only logical course of action, took his spray on and Added a little extra. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the only thing that can make this better would be a barbecue. So that's exactly what he did. He got out his grill and he was lighting it. He was leaning over it went, Did you know deodorant is flammable? <laughs> Bill Hodger sure does. That's exactly what his deodorant caught on fire and a flame covered, sweet smelling man started running in circles around his backyard. <laughs> Fortunately, he found a water hose and he made it out. But I don't think he uses spray on anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so just like the natural consequence of deodorant and fire is more fire, the natural consequence of sin is death. The only way we can get around what we really deserve is by getting what we don't deserve. And that's God's grace. And I'll be talking about that for the next few minutes. We're first going to look into what is grace. Second of all, why we need it. And third, where do we see it in our lives? So to start off, what is grace? Well, one definition would be kindness given despite the worth of the one who receives it. Or the definition I prefer is two words. Unmerited favor. Unmerited favor, getting what you don't deserve. The nicest person doesn't get the most grace. It doesn't work like that, because if it did, I'd have all the grace and you wouldn't have any. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Graham puts it like this. He says, Grace is not sought, nor bought, nor wrought. It is a gift of Almighty God to a needy mankind. But that brings up the question. Why do we need grace? And that leads me to my second point. I mean, why would I need grace? I'm a pretty good person. I've you know, taken care of little kids on Sunday mornings for Sunday school. I've taken care of my neighbor's cow while they were on vacation. I mean, I've even gone to evangelism boot camp. <laughs> Why would I need grace? But then, I have to think about Jesus' perfect life. And that God has a perfect standard, which are the Ten Commandments. So, let's take a quick look. Uh, number nine, have I ever told a lie? And white lies do count. I know I've done that. Number eight, have I ever stolen anything, no matter the value? Yeah, I've done that too. Number one, have I ever put anything above my relationship with God? Yeah, I've done that. I put school in front of my relationship. I put the internet in front of my relationship with God. <laughs> Number six, that's murder. I never do that. But the Bible says that hate is murder. Just think about it. When you hate someone, you are you're thinking murderous thoughts. So bringing it all back, I'm a lying, thieving, idolatrous murderer. And that's only four of the Ten Commandments. Now before we go any further, we need to make something clear here. I haven't actually gone and physically murdered someone, so according to our human laws, I haven't done anything wrong. Because as humans, we can only make decisions on what we can see, which are other people's actions. But that's not so with God. God can see your heart, see your intentions, your motivations. So even though I haven't actually gone and physically murdered someone or built a statue to bow down and worship to, I have in my heart. Even though I may seem like a good person on the outside, I'm that criminal lawbreaker on the inside. And that's why we need grace. Romans 5, 8 through 9 says, But God demonstrates his own love towards us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having been justified by his blood, we should be saved from wrath through him. So, why can we need grace? So that we can be saved from wrath. We can be saved from God's holy wrath because we have all broken his law. A song by the band Reliant K puts our need plain and simple. In one of their songs, they say this. I'm giving up on doing this alone now. Because I failed, and I'm ready to be shown how. He's told me the way, and I'm trying to get there. 
and this life sentence that I'm serving, I admit, I'm every bit deserved. But the beauty of grace is that it makes life not fair. Let me say that again. The beauty of grace is that it makes life not fair. So, with grace, we don't get the natural consequence. So, in a way, with grace, your deodorant won't catch on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to my third point. Where do we see grace in our lives? Well, to put it very simply, everywhere. The fact that we're not dead because we have broken God's perfect law and that deserves the death penalty. James 2.10 says, For whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point is guilty of all. A man by the name of Brother Andrew knows a lot about God's grace. When he was about 20 years old, he joined the Dutch Foreign Legion. He describes his deployment in Indonesia in his book, God Smuggler. He writes about how his dreamed action-packed adventure war had turned into something totally different. How the targets he was shooting weren't just pieces of paper anymore, they were real people. Listen to his story in his own words. What was I doing? How had I gotten here? I was more disgusted with myself than I'd imagined possible. And then one day, the incident occurred that's haunted me all my life. We were marching through a village that was still partially inhabited, and we'd been in combat daily for the last three weeks. When about halfway through this peaceful-looking village, we stepped into a nest of mines, and without orders, without reasoning, we simply started shooting. We shot everything in sight. And when we came to ourselves, there wasn't a living thing left in the village. We skirted the mine area and walked through the desolation we'd created. And at the edge of the village, I saw the sight that sent me nearly mad. On the ground, in the pool of her own blood, lay a young Indonesian mother. A baby boy at her breast. They were both killed by the same bullet. I think I wanted to kill myself after that. If life were completely fair, and we got exactly what we deserved, Lightning from heaven would have come down and killed everyone in Andrew's unit because that is what they deserve. But to friends, acquaintances, and people he didn't even know, Andrew began to learn about God's unmerited favor. After he trusted Christ and was freed from his guilt, Andrew felt a calling to get the Bible to people who didn't have it. He has now smuggled over a million copies of the Bible into communist countries. Think about how many people he's affected. Think about the power of grace. And think about what would have happened if Andrew hadn't found out about God's unmerited favor. But the point should be made. We shouldn't go around taking advantage of grace. In Romans 6, 1 and 2, it says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin so that grace may abound? Certainly not. How can we who have died to sin live any longer in it? So we should avoid sin as much as possible. We should strive for excellence. But that won't erase what we've done. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. It is not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Not of works. So that no one can boast. We can't boast about saving ourselves. The fact that I sweep the floor and do the dishes, that's good, but that's not going to get me to heaven. Doing 58.5 good deeds a day, that's not going to do it either. Only God's grace can do that. So remember Deodorant dude. He made it out of the hospital in about four weeks. But as the criminal lawbreakers we are, we deserve to burn in hell for all of eternity. And remember that man that died 2,000 years ago to make grace possible. The man that died to save the people that wanted to kill him. Jesus Christ. You don't deserve grace, and I don't deserve grace. But God will give it to us if we will only trust Him with our lives.